conjecture show I'm just gonna do a live stream with it and it actually gave me a couple more ideas so I know a lot of people are into conspiracy theories and uh, fringe topics and things like that and you can see in the chat that I put a couple topics in there if or when we get some more people on here I'll start talking about some of them but I did want to share with you that Yesterday, I came across some footage that's about 14 years old on YouTube. And the footage has literally what it said was it was an interview with a vampire. An interview with a vampire. And of course, you know, I'm like very skeptical of all this stuff. And I started watching it and it was hilarious because at first, you know, the guy that, that was alleged to be the vampire, he had long hair, black hair. And, you know, he was smoking and um, he had like a Russian or Romanian accent. Just like you would picture Dracula to have, right? So I'm listening and I'm watching this guy and I realized something after watching about five minutes of it, watching this guy looking at the camera. This guy blinks voluntarily. He doesn't blink reflexively. Like most of us, when we're talking, you'll see, you know, the eyes blink. This guy was just looking straight on at the camera like this. No blinking. And then when he would speak, he would voluntarily blink like, like, see, my eyes are starting to water. He'd be talking and then when he would answer, he would blink like this. Yes, well, when I do this, you know, and, you know, but it was voluntarily. And I found that fascinating. Like, wow, this guy doesn't blink. And as he was looking at the camera, his gaze was like super intense, which is another thing that struck me. You don't see very many people that can hold a gaze like that without blinking. Folks, I know this. I used to have not blinking contests with people when I was younger, very competitive. <laughs> I know how hard it is to do that. And this guy was doing it for like 60 seconds straight or longer. And it got me thinking. And then I started listening to some of the things he was saying. It was just so interesting to me. But that's one of the things that, that I'd like to talk about and share with you. Because I'm sure that uh, this isn't a very uh, well-known footage on YouTube, the footage of the vampire. So I would say this, as of right now, I would say if anyone, if there's a possibility of anyone actually being a vampire that is hundreds and hundreds of years old, it's this guy that I saw in this video. If there's the possibility of that, he would be the guy. And coincidentally enough, he lives in New Orleans. I've been trying to find him on social media. His name is Anthony. I've been trying to find him on social media. I've been trying to find him footage of him recently, but it seems like there was like a sort of a, an explosion of footage of him 12 to 14 years ago and then gone, done. So that's unfortunate. 
because I would like to find, I would like to see him, what he looks like now, if he's aged or not. Because I saw footage of him 12 years ago and then 14 years ago, and there's no perceptible change in his features except for uh, facial hair. But, uh, all right. So that's one topic we could talk about. We can talk about the alien reptilian overlords, the Anunnaki from Nibiru. Uh, maybe that vampire will be enough because I heard he, he gave his closure on where vampires come from, who the original head vampire is and I say is because he says the original head vampire is still here and is still living well <laughs> living dead and the origins of the vampires and according to Anthony are very biblical very biblical and I will definitely share that with you if we can get some more people on here this must be a bad time of day to go live and I was actually thinking about, instead of doing a live stream with this, just like do a reaction video to the vampire videos I'm talking about. Which, I mean, it has really no practical value in day-to-day -day life except for curiosity. But wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be wild to think that you could be walking down the street and walk past someone who's an actual vampire who's hundreds of years old Who drinks blood and whatever all right so i'm gonna leave it up to you now i know there's some folks out there in the chat uh at least half a dozen maybe a little less don't be shy folks what you put in is what you get out even if it's just to say hello hi i'm watching how you doing i appreciate participation life is a participation sport not a spectator sport if you look at it that way hey there's one we can talk about thanks for the comment there who who sent that comment brown singlet a singlet isn't that what wrestlers wear amateur wrestlers um i like the word Incarnated. Whoa. So I suppose that comment goes with the presumption <clears throat> that we incarnated. Now, if you think about the word incarnated, I-N means no, then you have carnate, and then E-D is past tense. Now, let me look that up real quick. So I can get a handle on it. Let's <clears throat> say like carnate comes from carnal, obviously. Uh, no, that can't be right. Carnate, color of human flesh. Let me see carnal here, because I know it comes from carnal. Physical, human, mortal, from proto into European, S-K-E-R, to cut. So incarnate act literally means not human. <laughs> but I know what you mean when you say that. I know what you mean when you say that. Um, as you may or may not know, if you're new to this channel, this channel is primarily ba uh, about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, a mathematical interface on grammar that gives you the tools to uh, articulate your claims as facts. And when I say facts, I mean they can be certified and proven, not only to yourself, but to another contract party. 
Brown Singlet says, reptilians are real. I've captured several on live streams with their eyes turned into slits. You know, I've seen videos like that too on the internet of uh, newscasters where their pupils, not their entire eye, but their pupil will turn into a slit. Kind of like a house cat. Um, I don't know if that's due to the pixelation or the quality of the video. You can't really prove something like that unless it happens in front of your face and you actually see it happen, witness it happen with firsthand knowledge. So for me, that's not enough for me to say reptilians are real. The more tangible evidence for such a thing, I would say exists throughout history where you can look at the ancient Sumerians, you can look at carvings from different uh, cultures. There's, you know, carvings and depictions of very tall, lizard-like, two-legged beings. Now, whether that's individuals using their imagination or whether that's something they actually saw, who can say? Who can really say for sure? One thing I can say is that no one out there can prove to me beyond a shadow of a doubt with physical, material, tangible evidence that a such thing as a reptilian alien exists. There's just no way to do it. But of course it's a possibility. As you said, anything is possible. I mean, you can say anything is possible, but actually that is not all true either. Anything is not possible. I go by, and when I have to navigate with um, guessing about things, I put things into two categories. The possible and the probable. And I put reptilians into the possible part. C-U-S-D-S. I'm not sure what you're doing there. No idea what you're doing there. That has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, whatever it is you're doing. That's some often left field shit. <laughs> but that's okay because we are often left field in this live stream. We're doing conspiracies here. I'm trying real hard not to do too much of the correct sentence structure lensing here. Because I don't want to turn people away, you know, um, who may be emotionally invested in these types of topics. Because I know some people are. I saw a news reader called Brett Bear. His eyes turned into slits and flicked, and I captured it in a live stream. I put the video on my Twitter feed, and I was banned the next day. The video Brett was in. It was also deleted within 10 minutes. Well, that's interesting that, uh, that that happened. Of course, I don't know the full story, but I know there's plenty of footage out there of these things with the eyes turning into slits. But another thing I would say is that I'm aware of the length and breadth of the deep fake technology. It's video and photographic evidence, I don't think is admissible as 100% concrete evidence anymore, just because of the deep fakes. There's a, a Tom Cruise deep fake TikTok channel where this guy goes around and the deep fake of his face is so uh, accurate to Tom Cruise, but he's doing shit that Tom Cruise would never do. And if I played that for my mother, she would think it was Tom Cruise. I would think it was Tom Cruise if I didn't, if the channel didn't say it was a deep fake. So I, you know, even old pictures, like all of a sudden, you know, on the cusp of 
these deep fake technologies. Now suddenly we're getting all this uh, Tartarian Empire stuff coming out and supposed actual photos of what the land used to be, the cities used to look like, like old black and white photos of big air balloons and this, not air balloons, but uh, blimps and things like that in the skies. And it's like, okay, well, where were these pictures 10 years ago? Where were these pictures? Actually, um, I wouldn't call that parse incarnated. That, you, I think you're being funny. But parse, I would call that selective parse or cherry picking parse. <laughs> what you're doing there. But I mean, all of a sudden, these pictures of the Tartarian Empire and things like that are coming out. Like, where were those pictures 10, 20 years ago? Why, why all of a sudden now? Were they just created by someone in a studio? Because they look pretty real. Just like those pictures that come out of, uh, what, from back in the 1800s? The black and white uh, portraits of people who look like celebrities, like Jack Black. Jay-Z, Eddie Murphy, Nicolas Cage. People that look exactly like, I mean, what, what is it? Is it someone making these deep fakes or did these things just suddenly appear? Isn't it, isn't it, uh, C-U-S-D-S, what are you doing? What exactly are you trying to convey? What what point are you trying to get across by uh, commenting what you're commenting? Just curious. Do you feel we're being drip-fed information to help wake up humanity? Me? No, I don't feel that at all. I feel everything we need to know is available. We just have to go get it. I don't think anything is hidden. Anything of value is, is there if you know how to get it. Just like correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. It's all there. It's all here on this YouTube channel that you're on right now. If you want to learn the grammar, it's all here for you to learn. Free. Available to you. 900-ish videos. Nothing is hidden. But it's up to you to learn it. And that's the thing. Some people just don't really want to learn it. They say they do. They say they really want to wake up. But do they really? Do they really? Because if you're not willing to go, if you're not willing to play that tape the whole way through and void all your assumptions, presumptions, then you're probably not ready to receive the facts. I'd like to introduce you to my friend. His name. Tell him, him say. Me llamo Hector Oscar Pablo Pacho Chapito Papito Escobar. That's his name. C-U-S-D-S, I already did parse the word incarnated right at the beginning of the stream. I-N means no, carnate means carnal, physical, or to go to the earliest nativity root meaning to proto-Indo-European root means to cut, and an E-D is past tense, it means no. So literally it means not to cut, but if you take it in a modern sense, it means not carnal, not physical. That's the parse of incarnated. So, not physical in the past. That's the parse of that word. Which, you know, I've, even though this is a conspiracy stream, I gotta say, 
Parse is really the most important part of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Doing that repetitive work, looking things up, memorizing what is tangible contract, what is non-tangible contract, what those particles of negation are, what those positive performance words are, what those contract words are. It's invaluable to have that stuff on file in your brain when you're out there in the real world trying to use this. Because at no point are you really going to be able to say, hold on a minute, let me look at my etymology dictionary. Just, just a minute, just a minute. Can't do that. You have to have it all here. That's why it's so important to do that work every single day. All right, man. This is getting out of the conspiracy thing now. We're getting into, can't help it. I guess can't help it. Uh, gotta go into the grammar. It's like second nature. There's two things about correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. There's plenty of now space, i.e. time, to get the closure that you need. Parse always, parse aware. Go ahead. If you're on the internet right now, you have an etymology dictionary at your fingertips. You can type in the search bar in Google. Aware etymology, and then it will come up. But both of those words are no contract because it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, which is a particle of negation. So literally, always means no way, and aware means nowhere. Any word that starts with a vowel followed by a consonant at the beginning of the word is no contract. AL is contract if it comes at the end of the word. At the beginning of a word, any word, a vowel in front of a consonant is no, means no contract. That's one of the first things you learn in correct sentence structures. So, who is this person again? CUSDS. If you're interested in learning correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. AL is contract if it comes at the end of the sentence. Or, I'm sorry, at the end of the word. If the particle is used at the end of the word, it is contract. If it's at the beginning of the word, it is no contract. Because a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word is no contract. You want to talk about ad nauseum. <laughs> CUSDS. I can see that uh, you don't really know anything about correct sentence structure. You show no evidence of it. And if you keep repeating yourself like that, I'm going to treat you like a troll and ban you because you're talking nonsense. How do law maxims of law tie in with quantum grammar? Have they a place within QC? <clears throat> For me, I don't use any maxims of law. I use three principles. The balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, and the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. Now, if you know correct sentence structure and you want to incorporate certain laws or maxims into your biosphere, your construct of which you are the authority of, you're more than welcome to do that. You just have to translate them into correct sentence structure. You can use, you know, whatever you want to use. 
just like Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller did uh, when he took the he did the summary corrections of the rules of civil procedure and he uh, pardon me and he translated those into correct sentence structure and he used them as well as, as well as the US codes he translated those into you know his uh, interpretation of correct sentence structure and use those. You can find those on his business card. So you can do that if you want to. I choose not to. I just choose to use those three principles. And over the last six years, I found that that's more than enough to stop the trespass of the fiction system. Suffix versus prefix. Suffix is no contract. Prefix is no contract. SUF negates the now space. PRE negates the now space. I'm not sure what your volition is here, CUSDS. Well, why are you saying these things? None of these things make any sense within the context of correct sentence structure. Are you trying to impose plain English rules onto correct sentence structure? Or... Because what you're basically telling me is you don't know anything about correct sentence structure. Which is fine. I mean, lots of people don't. But I don't know why you're telling me these things because these things make no sense in the context of quantum grammar. And for evidence of that, check out the 900 videos on this YouTube channel. You know what? I've had about enough of that individual. They're not going to stop whatever they're doing. Trolling. Normally, I don't mind trolls, but this is supposed to be like a conspiracy thing, and they're not bringing anything to the table. So, Terrence Herming, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, if, if you find certain laws and principles valid or valuable to your construct, yes, you can incorporate them, but you would have to translate them into correct sentence structure into a positive performance condition of state. Just like I did with for the balance of the honor and of the grace, for the maintenance of the rule one and of the rule equal, and for the position of the peace and of the neutrality. Do you feel there are beings living within the earth, not just on it? Do I feel that? No, I don't really feel that because I don't know what the middle of the earth is. Uh, never been there. Don't know if such a place even exists. That's based on an assumption. Uh, I know that I've read things about that, that the earth is hollow. But I will tell you, you know, this can bring us into the whole flat earth, round earth thing. Um, what I participate with as far as shape of earth, I feel it's a continuous plane. Whether that's flat or curved, I, I don't really know offhand. What I can certify with my own two eyes is when I'm 40,000 feet in the air in an airplane, the horizon stays at eye level. So that tells me it's probably not a spinning ball. But as to whether it is a flat thing, I don't know. I think it's like a continuous plane, P-L-A-N-E, that can do all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> That's what I can certify with my own eyes. If you and I go outside right now and uh, say if we were in Arizona where it's flat pretty much and we look as far as the eye can see, does the land look flat to you or does it look round? Does the land look like a plane that just continues or does it look like a curved ball shaped thing that's spinning? It just comes down to first hand knowledge for me. And as far as beings existing inside of whatever that is, inside of or below that plane, no idea. 
I do know there's underground bases. I do know that. I do know there's domes. That's a fact. There are people living in underground bases and underground cities. There's no doubt about that, if that's what you mean. But I don't think that's what you meant. You feel it's an odd-shaped ball. Let me ask you this. How would you certify that? How would you be able to prove that to another human being? Like, what proof would you have besides satellite composite photos or things like that? How would you be able to prove that firsthand? The way that I can prove to you that this is a kitten. You see, I have no certification that aliens exist either. I've never met one. I've never seen one that I know of. Okay, so do I think it's possible? Of course I think it's possible. But I have no proof of it. Right. So that's one thing, you know, to bring it back to the grammar, you have to be very careful about. If you're going to use correct sentence structure, you only put on the paper the facts that you can certify. That you can prove with the continuance of the evidence. That's why I tell people, you know, if you're going to use the word God... In a correct sentence structure, you better be able to prove that to someone else the same way that I can prove that this is a cat. Or that this is a cup. Or that you can go outside and feel the wind. We can certify the wind because we feel it. We certify it. We name it. Can you do the same thing with something like God or an alien or a ghost? Those are things you have to be very, very careful of. Ivandian, muchas gracias, amigo. Kayandewe. Donde estás? I'll be right back. What's your thought on people who say they can astral travel? I would say that is a probability, not a possibility, a probability. Only because I myself have done a form of that. I have firsthand knowledge with that. Although I can't certify that to someone else, I can only explain how it happened. Think about this. I helped someone create a correct sentence structure document contract postal vessel court venue and they were talking about uh, how could I say this without breaking confidentiality they were taking jurisdiction over something that was cosmic a place in the sea of space where if you look up and you see stars and things like that in the sky they were taking jurisdiction over something up there, making a claim of traveling to somewhere like that. So I had to ask them, I said, how, do you, how can you certify that? How would you travel to that star? I had the answer, but I wanted to know if they knew the answer. And they said that they didn't know. And I told them, with your thought, thinking is a form of time travel or space travel. It's a vehicle that can take you to the past or to the future. What does this say? All right, I can't read that comment. Hold on, I gotta pull this up. I can't read this. I'm on an iPad right now and I can't read what this guy said. Because I'm price price is sure it's a doozy. Bro, 
Brother Glass, with all due respect. Uh-oh, before I even go any further, when someone says all due respect, it usually means they're about to shit on you. Notice, within use multiple videos, use are all about parsley syntax. Notice, David Wayne Miller explains AL is contract with the prefix as well as the suffix. Well, guess what? C-U-S-D-S. David Wynn Miller's books, book has hundreds and hundreds of errors in it. I've done a video on this. David Wynn Miller's book has tons of mistakes in it. David Wynn Miller's videos are inconsistent and they have inconsistencies in them, which I have pointed out. You, on the other hand, don't have closure on the grammar. So how do you know what's correct or what isn't? Are you just taking David's word for it? Because that's not the type of individual I am. I don't just take someone's word for it. I ask for evidence and certification. I was blessed to have been in contact with David Wynn Miller during the last year of his life. So I count him as one of my teachers. I have a lot of love and honor for the man. However, the man is not infallible, and he made a shit ton of mistakes. That's a hard truth that you have trouble uh, accepting, especially since I'm sure that you come from the Mark Lowercase K. Kishon school of whatever you want to call it, what you people do. Mark Kishon Christopher does not know correct sentence structure. He does not know how to syntax. He uses plain, simple English in a bastardized form of, of quantum grammar. It's not even quantum gobbledygook. It's horrendous. So, all right, that's all I'll say about that. And by the way, we are not related, bro, at all. You're not my brother. <laughs> So, so long. So that's my thoughts on astral travel. Welcome. A uh, thank you for the membership there, Brown Singlet. Are you a wrestler? Is that why your name Brown Singlet? Just curious. Because I'm a big fan of wrestling, amateur wrestling, that is, and martial arts. Muay Thai, huh? Well, that's great. That's awesome. I myself did a little Muay Thai back in the 90s, actually had a pole that I set up in my backyard and I wrapped one single piece of carpet around it about the thickness of this. I wrapped around the pole and every day I would go out there and kick that pole with my shins and, you know, do elbows and all that stuff. And my shins... The nerves in my shins got deadened to the point where I could kick someone else in the shin. And of course, it would put them on the ground, but it wouldn't hurt me at all. Of course, since then, my nerves have regenerated. I can't do that anymore. But, but I love Muay Thai. Muay Thai is great. You mix that in with wrestling, jujitsu, boxing, which is my absolute favorite. Western boxing, that is. Sweet signs. And uh, you got a nice uh, mix there. Thanks for sharing that. I'm a big fan of martial arts. Back when men were men. Well, men are still men. Unless, of course, they think they're girls. But I don't get into any of that LGBT, LMNOP delusional stuff. There's a conspiracy theory for you. So just so you folks know, you see that that C-U-S-D-S -S individual, Conscious Universal Secrets of Divine Self, 
CUSDS, Conscious Universal Secrets of Divine Self. CUSDS is an adjective. Conscious is an adjective. Universal is an adjective. Secrets is a pronoun. Of is an adverb. Divine is an adjective and self is a pronoun. That individual is definitely a troll from the domain of Mark Cushon Christopher, who has come out publicly and slandered me personally many times in videos and also on his website. Now, if you notice, I don't slander Mark Cushon. I just say he doesn't know the grammar. He doesn't know correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. Have you read the Emerald Tablets of Thoth? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. By the way, folks, I don't know if you ever heard David Wynn Miller talk about keys and being a key master. People ask, well, what's he talking about keys? Well, if you want to know about keys, grab any tarot deck with 78 cards, and there's your keys, 78 keys. Half positive, half negative. And the reason why I brought that up is because uh, they were talking about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. I've also read uh, many of Aleister Crowley's books, the Book of Thoth. Uh, his tarot deck is uh, very well done, actually. The art on it and things like that is pretty cool. A lot of symbolism and education to be had there if, if one is open-minded to that type of thing. Uh, the man who was said to have found them and translated them is named Maurice Doreal. Maurice Doreal. I'm going to look that up. Maurice Do. Real American translator. Maurice de Real was born Claude Doggins. Why did he change his name? He was the founder of the Brotherhood of the White Temple. He claimed during a 1925 visit to the Great Pyramids of Giza, he discovered a set of ancient emerald tablets belonging to Egyptian deity Thoth who he reimagined as a king of Atlantis. Duriel then claimed to have translated the text which he published. He was involved in theosophy. He met two Atlanteans. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Definitely a possibility. But I guess we're just supposed to take Duriel or Doggins, whatever his name is. I guess we're just supposed to take his word for it, aren't we? That he discovered the emerald tablets. Did we ever have pictures of the physical tablets themselves? And him finding them? Is there footage of that? It's kind of like the Zachariah Sitchin translation of the Sumerian cuneiform tablets. When he did that, no one else really knew how to translate Sumerian, so we just kind of had to take his word for it. So basically, in those areas we're navigating on assumption, presumption, we have to be very careful. Probably what I'm going to do with this, like I do with all the other ones, I'm going to take it and edit out the, uh, the silences and put together the best bits of the video and then republish it. But since we got a few people here, I'm going to repeat what I said at the beginning of the stream. Uh, since this is supposed to be a cognitive conjecture stream where we talk about conspiracies and things you can't prove. I saw a video yesterday, I saw some videos with someone who claimed to be a vampire. 
they were being interviewed. The name of the video, I think, was actually Interview with a Vampire. And it was from about 14 years ago. And it, the, the dude looked like a stereotypical vampire. He had long black hair. And um, looked fairly young, maybe to be 30s, 40s, I guess. But the striking thing about it was, you know, the guy claimed to be a vampire. He had like a Romanian or a Russian accent. Just like you would think Count Dracula would sound or look like. The thing that struck me about it was that he blinked voluntarily. Like most of us blink reflexively. Like if you watch me talking, you'll see me blink real quick like that. And you don't even know you're doing it. You know, it's just your body doing a reflex. As Gurdjieff say, that is part of the instinctive center of your body. This guy looked dead at the camera like this, did not blink. He would do this for like two minutes while he was listening to the interviewer, just looking dead at the camera. And then when he would speak, then he would blink like this. He would go, well, uh, blah, 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 and, and he would blink like that, but he would not blink reflexively. I found that very odd. As an individual that used to do staring contests, I know what it takes to do that. And he did it comfortably. And when he looked at the camera, it was very intense. Like, type of stare. It was unusual for someone to make eye contact like that. As someone who likes to make eye contact in person, out in public, and does a lot of uh, vetting through that eye contact and the way people react to eye contact, that's unusual. Especially if someone's not crazy and he did not appear to be crazy. He didn't have that weird glint to his eye. He looked completely sane. But anyways, he claimed to be a vampire, hundreds of years old. So if anybody's a vampire, if that such a thing exists, that guy is probably a vampire. <laughs> he probably is what he says he is. If anybody is, if such things even exist. But the point I wanted to bring up actually was his discussion of the origins of vampires. He said that he was shown the origins of where the original vampire came from. I had never heard this before, so I'm going to share this with you to paraphrase what this guy said. He said that he traveled, you know, through the whatever astral plane through his third eye. His uh, the vampire that turned him guided him back in the past to the beginning of vampires. And he said he saw the earth and it was covered in blood. And supposedly the blood was what the Bible would consider to be God. And then this thing that looked like a, a serpent that was, what do you say? It was white with blue spots or something like that. Came and sunk its fangs into the earth and sucked all the blood out. And then he said the next scene was, you see Cain. Remember the story of Cain and Abel from the Bible? And you hear God say, where is Abel? Where is Abel? Which, of course, is a rhetorical question. If your God is all-knowing, God already knows where Abel is. So that's it's kind of condescending, bro. But he asked him, where is, where is Abel? Where is Abel? And then the serpent bites Cain in the ankle. Thus, Cain has to walk the earth for all eternity. So, i.e., what the, you know, long story short, what this vampire whose name is Anthony, what Anthony said was Cain was the first vampire. And he claims that Cain is still here on earth. <laughs> uh, folks.
works. If you consider yourself to be a Jew or a Muslim or a Christian, and you're saying to yourself, that story sounds like a bunch of BS. Hold on for a minute. Because if you can believe in what the Bible says about this, that, or the third, this story is just as viable as that. Because there's no way to prove any of it, folks. No way at all. I just found it interesting because I had never, ever heard that story before about Cain being the first vampire. And this Anthony guy, this va uh, self-proclaimed vampire, claimed that uh, he had the Cain energy. That that's what he used. And he also said that the what the movies say about vampires is mostly wrong. That he has no problem walking out in the daylight. He can walk into churches and things like that. He can wear crosses. He can wear jewelry. There's nothing like that that, you know, he can pray if he wants to. Prayers and things like that don't affect him. I think he said he can't fly. He said he does have certain abilities of persuasion or enchantment. Like he can do things like that. He can do a lot of psychological things through telekinesis supposedly which there are, there are other folks that can do that too but he does need to feed every day which he does via physical human blood or he can feed on physical or I'm sorry human energy I guess human energy like a psychic vampire. He can feed like that. But he said the physical blood is much more, of course, satisfying. You get more filled off of that. Is it true? I don't know. I just know it's very interesting and I'd never heard that before. Let me see. I think I got another super chat out here. Uh, super chat. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks to everybody out there who participated with this live stream. And uh, for the people who comment, appreciate that. And I really have to get better at these conspiratorial live streams because I always go back into the grammar because it's second nature to me. I'm always looking at things through a practical lens. But I am open-minded. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one and the easiest one is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the loyalist contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content fresh content exclusive content not available to the public every month but keep in mind there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study and the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and this is for the serious students only and apply for a correct grammar workshop but please include your correct name when contacting me and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.